Hello Periscope, this is Antoinette Awoshika, owner of Performance Therapy Massage. And what I'm going to be talking about today is ethics in therapeutic massage. I am the owner of Performance Therapy Massage. I've been a massage therapist for six years. And I'm talking about ethics tonight because I've heard some very scary stories um, about massage therapists not being ethical or not being professional. So I just wanna give a few quick tips. They may be between about no more than five. So the first thing is there is no one size fits all in massage therapy. Different therapists do different things. So once you go to a massage therapist, first of all, you're gonna to talk to them on the phone. If you get a bad vibe about that person on the phone, it is your right to decline and just say, you know, thank you for your time and I will get back in touch with you or I don't think this is going to be a good fit. Remember, going to a massage therapist is just like going to any other health professional. You have to feel comfortable with the person you are going to be working with especially when this person will be touching you and you will be in a very vulnerable position. So for that reason, you want to make sure that you trust this person to the, from, just from the standpoint of allowing this person to work on you. Number two, once you get past the trust and you say, yes, I want to work with this person, you are supposed to be draped which means you're supposed to be covered and only the parts of your body that are being worked on are supposed to be exposed. We have what is called informed consent. And that means if you, this person is about to work on your glutes, they need to ask you first, would you like me to work on your glute? Or if it's necessary that the, the, the therapist works on your glute, then they need to say, Mrs. Smith, Mr. Smith, because you told me this is going on with you, it is necessary for me to work on your glute. Is that okay with you? They need to have your permission for your glutes, for anywhere around the chest area for women or men, and then for the medial thigh. Those are the place and the face. Those are some of the, the more common places where People are very sensitive, so you don't want to alarm someone and you don't want them to feel uncomfortable, so you get informed consent. Number three, when your therapist is working on you, they should always ask you, how is the pressure? You know, how is the pressure? Does my pressure need to increase? Does it need to decrease? They need to ask you, you know, how are you feeling? If they're not asking you this, or if they're telling you, if you say, well, that's a lot of pressure, and they tell you no pain, no gain, that is a red flag. And you need to say, would you please stop? And you need to leave. Do not be afraid of hurting the therapist's feeling because when you are with a doctor, the doctor has that fiduciary responsibility to you as the patient it is the same thing when you are with a massage therapist the massage therapist has that fiduciary responsibility to you so if the massage therapist is not acting in your best in your best interest then you need to stop the massage and you need to leave and you have that right number four professionalism your massage therapist should be professional. So when you walk in, you should be greeted in a professional manner. You should be asked, Do, would you like some water? You should be uh, informed as far as what's going on with you. They should give you a summary of what they are going to do, what the treatment plan is, and how they are going to execute it. And that is what you should expect because you're paying for the service. You are allowing this person to work on you. And so you need to be an informed client. 
if you are asking your therapist these questions and your, ther your therapist cannot properly answer these questions for you, then you either need to do one of two things. You can say, therapist X, please give me more information. Please give me detailed information. If your therapist is appears to be annoyed or is not forthright or forthcoming, then that is another reason to leave and go find another therapist. In doing so, what you will do is you will cause this therapist to look back at the interaction from the tele from the initial telephone call to the coming in to the office and the evaluation to the the service the massage to after service when you're going over what was found and what needs to be done this course of action will help you to find the best therapist that is for you bonus before you go in, write down exactly, you want to reflect on everything as a whole. That is exactly right. Before you go into a massage therapist, write down what your, what your pain issues are, what your goals are coming out of the service, what your long-term long goals are. Also, when you're Googling massage therapist, whatever is going on with you, say if you, you're a cancer survivor, Google cancer massage. There are massage therapists that are certified in uh, oncology massage, prenatal massage, um, massage for autoimmune deficiencies such as MS or um, was this other one fibromyalgia so you want to make sure that the massage therapist you're going to is certified or has uh, years of experience in the issue the medical issue that you're dealing with so between writing down what your short-term and your long-term goals are and making sure that that therapist is certified in what you need then it boils down to the interaction. With those, doing those things beforehand will definitely help you have an excellent experience with your massage therapist. Because what you're doing is, hi, how are you? What you're doing is you are setting yourself up for a win-win situation. Massage is a very effective allied health profession. And when you are partnered with the right massage therapist, you will receive and yield great results. So until next time, thank you for choosing Performance Therapy Massage. I am Antoinette Awoshika. Thank you for all the beautiful hearts and God bless.